to really get to know your drivers and where they live. Okay. And, and Rick said it, I say it, everybody in this business from the, from the law enforcement, from the enforcement side, tell you will tell you very quickly. If you don't get involved with your drivers, they will close your business. They are the, they are the life of your business. Your, your drivers, the people that move your equipment. Um, they are going to be the ones who either make or break you. We follow in Tennessee the CDSA, Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance. We follow the inspection procedures. Obviously, we have an inspection procedure for that inspection. And I don't who here has now service criteria. Does anybody? Uh, if you did, I want to make sure that you know the CVSA out of service criteria changes annually. So you want to make sure that you keep the current, uh, current uh, out of service criteria. Most of the time, y'all deal with technical uh, descriptions given by the manufacturers, and we don't necessarily do that. We deal with the out of service criteria. So when you hear me mention that you know this could be an out of service item. That's where I'm going to go to find that. Um, let's go on over to the truck. This is going to be our driver, Jim. Now, i got to tell you, you come very close to getting put in jail early. If he doesn't act up, you know, it'll be a good afternoon. But if he does, then he's going to have to end up going to jail. Good. All right. First thing I'm going to do when I when I do an inspection is I've, obviously I've got to stop this truck either at a way station or on the side of the interstate. I'm going to try to find a safe location to get it stopped. Um, that can be a pretty big issue. Once I get it stopped, then I'm going to come up and I'm going to I'm going to interview the driver, and I'm going to do most of that putting the driver at a disadvantage, and that's that's an officer officer safety issue. Why am I spending some time here talking about? the driver interview because this is where you as administrators need to be spending a lot of your time. If you know what's going through this person's mind, you're going to be much farther along in the safety and maintenance business. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to open the door and I'm going to look and I'm going to listen and I'm going to, I am physically going to try to take in this driver's um, living establishment. This is the driver's house. Okay. The, 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 the different smells, the, 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 what I hear, what I see, I'm looking at the floorboard, and all this is going to be part of my inspection, but I'm also failing this driver out to see what kind of person this driver's doing, and I'm starting going to build that bond, okay? That's one thing we don't do in this industry, is we don't build a bond with our drivers, okay? Your driver's making mistakes, you got to know why the driver's making that mistake, okay? So once I'm here, I'm talking to the driver, I'm looking at all the gauges, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the floorboard, as I said earlier, I've actually seen, physically seen trucks that the floorboard was gone. Driver's <laughs> driving down the road and there's no floorboard. I look through where the driver's feet's at and I see engine and, and, and uh, road. That's not good, okay? That's where we came from. Hopefully we're not going to go back there. When I'm looking inside the cab of the truck, what am I looking for? Rick talked about drug and alcohol. Most of the time, the driver doesn't need to tell me what he has. I'll be able to sense it. The little round burn marks you see on your seats and in your carpets and your truck, that's not where your driver's dropping cigarettes. That's where the marijuana seeds are getting hot and popping out of the marijuana cigarette as they're rolling down the road and burning holes. And as you go back and you see round burn marks in your seats, you got a driver smoking pot, okay? And you need to be aware of that. Looking at the floorboard, what, what kind of trash they throw down, all that. All that is part of our inspection. Here again, a speedometer, low air warning device, windshield wipers, horn. All that I'm going to inspect at some point in time during the inspection. I also want to make sure that the driver's seat belt is in good working order and that they had it on. Okay? Now, why does that make a difference? Well, I tell you what. There was a school bus run off the bridge in Huntsville, Alabama uh, a few years ago, Thanksgiving. Killed four young ladies. That was a brand new international school bus. Guess why the school bus ran off the bridge? 
because the driver slid out of the seat, down the stairwell, and was laying in the road, and the school bus kept going. Killed four people. That's how important that seat is, that's, that seat belt and that seat. Drivers can get thrown out of that seat, okay? That's the same style seat that's in that uh, school bus. That driver's laying over there between the two seats. They can't drive, okay? They can't drive. Well, it bothers me. You know what? Get out of the business. Go do something else if it bothers you. Have them make sure they're, they're wearing their seat belt, okay? I want to check the fire extinguisher in the stop vehicle warning devices also while I'm here. Okay, talking the driver through that, I'm going to ask him different questions. You know, do you have uh, reflectors, stop vehicle warning devices? Just talking to them, getting a conversation going because I'm going to, I'm going to ask the driver questions and get them to tell me what I need to know. Okay? Once I do that, I'm going to prepare the driver for the inspection and I'm going to come out. I'm going to come outside the truck and uh, go ahead Jim, start your truck up. The air is a little low in this one so we're going to build it back up. Let him, we're going to let him build it up. We're going to check the headlights and the, all the clearance lights, marker lights, turn signals, things of that nature. I think that's all pretty obvious to, to each and every one of us. One of the things as an inspector that I've learned over the last 21 years is that if, if there's something wrong with that, usually the truck's going to tell me, okay? And it's going to tell me through the way it sounds or the smells that come from it. As an example, a wheel seal shot. When when wheel seal shoots, filling the brake uh, the brake area with uh, with grease, that has a distinct smell to it. Does anybody I got any mechanics here? I got any technicians? Does that not have a distinct? Can you not tell that? As soon as you walk up to it, so I, I, that's what I'm looking for. I'm, I, I, I'm I'm trying to smell those smells when I'm out here doing this inspection. Also, as that truck's coming in to me down, whether it be down the ramp or I'm following it down the interstate, is it tracking? Is the trailer running to the right or to the left? Is that what, what's going on with that trailer? Center pins in the in the drive axle. Center pins broke. Truck will run sideways. So all those things are important to me. It's things that that other than that, that even before the inspection starts, I'm going to try to to. Uh, Take a look at, listen, hear, see. All I'm going to use all my senses to do the inspection. Now that's kind of you won't hear that from a lot of people, but that's just the common person's way of doing doing an inspection. Okay, if you got a real good tech, they're going to use utilize the same things to do the maintenance. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get Jim to come on down. We're going to open the hood up. Again, we checked, we're, we're going to check all the lights as we go around. I'm not going to have Jim turn his lights on again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here. We're going to work our way back and talk about some pieces and parts.
Now as I'm preparing Jim for the inspection, first thing I'm going to tell him, Jim, go ahead and release all your brakes. What Jim has just done is released his parking brake or his emergency brake. In other words, he's put air in the spring side of that brake chamber and he's compressed that spring so the brakes are just like they are if he was traveling down the interstate right now. Okay, they're, they're released. Now we're going we're gonna to check the service brake side of the system. Okay, as we're starting here at the front, now again we check the headlights and everything. I'm going to start with the steering system and then as I was looking inside the cab I checked the steering wheel to make sure that it wasn't broke, pieces missing out of it. Now I'm going to ask Jim, rock your steering wheel please. Alright, keep, keep going, keep going. As you see the steering, the steering cylinder here comes down to the steer box, okay. I'm checking the universal joints in that. I'm checking the steer box to make sure it's secured and not moving. I'm also checking the pitman arm on the output shaft to make sure that there's no movement in between there. That's good. Thank you. All right. Under hand pressure. That's fine. That's fine. Under hand pressure, I'm, I am going to check the drag link. Okay. The drag link attaches here to the steer arm or to the pitman arm. Pitman arm to the drag link to the steer arm. All right. The steer arm then goes connects the wheel to the wheel. The wheel is, is, is the kingpins run down through the axle and then the tie rod goes across the other side which keeps the tires in, in alignment. Okay. One thing I didn't do to the other group and I wish I had, as your, as your techs are checking doing the pre-trip or uh, doing just a PM inspection on it, have them pull on the steer tires and make sure the, the, the uh, bearings are tight. Okay, because if I, all that, and you don't have to be a beast to do this, all right? These young ladies right here could walk up, just have them to, to pull on top of the steer tire and you'll hear them pop. If the bearings are bad, you'll hear them pop. The best way to do it is to put a jack under it and raise the whole thing up. But that, you, you may not be able to do that, but that's a quick, easy, dirty way of checking those bearings, okay? You will find them. I have found school buses out here Brand new school buses come from the factory with wheel bearings loose in them. So, I promise you, you'll, you're going to find them, okay? Now, if that driver loses that steering system, he's in a bad way. All right, so I'm checking all the steering system. I'm also, and, and, and part of the time I'm going to be under here, but I'm checking the, the, uh, the, the springs, the shackles, the spring hangers, all those U-bolts, the axle going across on both sides. I'm checking all those parts on both sides. If you'll come up and look, and I've got both sides marked, you'll see a white chalk mark at the face of the brake chamber where the push rod comes out. That's the first mark in determining the inside. It just, just yell, I'll come, can y'all see it? That's the first mark in determining the push rod travel. Okay. According to Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance procedures, what we do is we make a mark on that push rod at the face of that brake chamber. We're also determining what size brake chamber that is. Once we've made that mark, now when the driver applies the brakes, the push rod is going to come out. It's going to come out whatever, maybe an inch and a half. I'm going to make a second mark on that push rod at the face of the chamber and I'm going to measure between the two marks. What that gives me is a travel distance for the push rod. Okay, and that's on your inspections where you see brake measurements. That's how we get that. Alright, so you can take that, you can apply that to the CVSA criteria and you can find out if that brake should have been placed out of service for brake adjustment, the 20% criteria. Okay. Now there's certain other things, if you want to Jim, go ahead and make a brake application now. Now if you come up and you can look, hold on to it Jim, hold on. You come up and you can see that that line, that mark moved out. And I actually made a second mark in there. But if we were to take that six inch rule that I showed you earlier and put on there, that would be the measurement of push rod travel. 
Okay. So, that's fine. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and let go. So, that's how we come up with that measure. If you ever wanted to know that, now you know. When you see that on the compliance or the inspection, we call it a compliance check, then you'll know that's how we came up with that. Now, we're going to take all those measurements, we're going to determine what type brake chamber, what size brake chamber, and we're going to look at the readjustment limits. Once we have a brake that meets that readjustment limit, if it goes an eighth of an inch over, now we have a defect. All right, that would be one brake in a, in, in a total of whatever. It could be six, eight, ten, whatever, whatever many brakes. Now, that in and of itself can create an out-of-service condition if enough brakes are out of adjustment. From the steer axle standpoint, there's other things that will place you out of service automatically. As an example, grease and oil on a steer brake lining. Okay, that's automatic out of service. Even if you just got one. If you're missing parts, pieces and parts off this steer brake system, that would place you out of service. If you got mismatched slack adjusters or mismatched uh, brake canisters, you got a, a 24 and a 30, that's going to put you out of service. Okay, so all those things could be out of service items. A broken spring up here because most of the time you have either a two or a three leaf spring system on the on the steer axle, one broken spring would be out of service. Okay. One broken spring. Uh, any of the, the anchor points where the frame would be broke could possibly be an out of service item. Could or could not be depending on how bad it's broken. Okay. Um, also while I'm under there I'm looking for any grease or oil leaking antifreeze, things of that nature. Also, while I'm here, I'm going to look and make sure that the air compressor is mounted, uh, not broken loose, that, uh, you know, around the fuel pump, I'm also looking for fuel leaks. Most of your trucks now are gear-driven gear um, air compressors, so belts aren't as big an issue as they once were. Okay? Any questions up here? We're going to start moving back, all right? And again, the whole time, I'm kind of leaving Jim out of this, and he feels neglected, but the whole time I'm doing this, I'm talking to that driver, all right? Number one, I want that driver to know where I'm at, because I do not want him starting this truck, and he already heard this. While I'm around it, I do not want it started. If his air gets low, then I'm going to get out of the way and let him start his truck, okay? Right here, I'm checking to make sure the fuel tanks are securely mounted. And I'm going to check this, the same thing on the other side, okay? I'm going to check the same thing on the other side. While I'm up here, I didn't talk about it, but we're going to talk, let's, let's talk about the uh, tires, the, the wheels and the rims for just a minute. Okay, I'm checking for any cracks. Hand hold the lug hole, hand hold the hand hole, hand hold the center hole, lug hold the center hole. Uh, I'm looking for loose or missing wheel fasteners, and they're not lug bolts. They're wheel fasteners, and I, I, I keep busting at troopers for writing up lug bolts. That's, that's not what they are. They're wheel fasteners. I want to make sure that they're not loose. I want to make sure there's no nails or anything in the tires. Uh, I also want to make sure that the tire is pumped up. Now, I can't say that we do that all the time. It has the right amount of pressure in it. You in the industry know how important that is. You let a tire get low, and that tire is going to blow out. You know, that's, that's just, that's just, we know that already, okay? Now, keep moving back, and again, while I'm back here, I can look at the exhaust system. Um, diesel exhaust is not that big of an issue, but it's certainly something that can make a driver um, uncomfortable, okay? And we want to make sure that there's no holes or anything that the, the exhaust can come up through the cab in. While I'm back here, I'm checking the airlines. Did you fix the? Did you fix the the, the grommet in the service? I think yeah, the other guy. Yeah. yeah well, they cheated. They cheated. Yeah. See, the, the first group we <laughs> found the defect, and, uh, and and I tell you, Jim was getting ready to go to jail over it. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as as soon as Jim hit the uh, hit hit the service brake, 
the anti-air leak on the on the service line. I paid him ten bucks. You did? Huh? I paid him ten bucks to get cool. me out of jail. I understand. <laughs> That's a cheap jail trip. So that that Jim has fixed that. But that would certainly be a defect. The other question, something else that came up was these these uh, 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 brake line brake uh, hoses, tubing and hoses laying down and chafing. You know, depending on the inspector, I can't, you, you, you don't have two drivers that do the same thing. You don't have two dispatchers that do the same thing. Depending on the inspector, a chafing line, to me, if I'm going to ride a chafing line up, it's laid there long enough that it's beginning to it's rub the flat spot. Okay? That, to me, is, is creating, creating a potential issue. If it's just laying down there and it's not, it's, it's not creating a flat spot, I may tell the driver, hey, you know, you need to get these up, but I'm not going to, I'm not necessarily going to put it down as a defect. All right, I keep working back, and here again, I'm looking at the frame. When I get to the drive axles, all right, I'm going to go on, up in front first, go underneath, and I'm going to mark my brakes, because usually they're on the front of the axle, okay? And I'll have the driver apply the brake, and I'll check that push rod travel on, on those. Then I'm going to come out and I will go underneath from the rear and do the do the back brakes. Now, tell your techs, your mechanics, whatever you call them, especially on the on the the, uh, the, the, the tandem, the, the twin drives. Slide up between the axles, check up underneath to make sure that the cross member, the frame bolts aren't loose, and make sure it's not cracked because you're that. There's a lot of a lot of weight right here. Okay, there's a lot of weight where we all know where this fifth wheel, where the trailer and the truck attaches. So we need to make sure that we check this frame area very good. We're also going to check the suspension. We're going to check the tires for tread depth. We're going to check them for make sure that they're uh, uh, that they're properly in, inflated. Here we can't check the wheel fast because of the pretty stuff that's on it, and that's okay, you know. Does that mean I still can't do a good inspection here? Absolutely not. What would one thing that I want to look for when I'm doing an inspection? If I can't necessarily see the wheel faster, tell me something I can look for that would indicate to me i got a problem. Rust. There you go. Every, it'll tell on you every time. And I tell you folks, as long as it's been since it's rained, if you'd have been doing inspections last night after the rain, it would have been, I guarantee you, that is the best time when, a, when it's come a rain after a while to do inspections. When it's not rained in a while and all of a sudden it comes up sure of rain, that is the best time to go out and check your equipment because it'll tell on itself every time. All right, the upper and the lower coupler. Here, what I'm looking for in the upper coupler, I certainly want to make sure and look and make sure that the upper coupler is not collapsed, to make sure that the kingpin is, is, is in place as well as I can. I'm also going to make sure before I get in under it and before I complete my inspection that the locking jaws is locked. It would absolutely boggle your mind the number of trucks running down the road right now that the kingpin locking jaws are unlocked. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. It would boggle your mind. You mean the locking mechanism itself? Yes, sir. That's unlocked driving down the road. Absolutely. Poor drivers. Poor drivers. And what happens usually is they get in a hurry, they back under them too hard, and the trailer jumps up, and the, the king panel will sit down on the locking jaws. They'll, the landing gear, they'll dolly it up. Boom, they're gone to the first truck stop. What do you think? You, I mean, why don't they come off? <laughs> Good Lord above. <laughs> That's the only reason I can think of. Because uh, I've seen them come off. Maybe. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You fire a driver, you fire a driver, you better check them locking jaws before you put another driver under it. <laughs> I've seen that happen, too. What well, they do, too? They'll run up and they'll unlock it. Oh, okay. I see. But here again, make sure check those locking jaws because I'm going to tell you, if we were to unhook this trailer and, 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 and go out and look at any trailer you want to around here at the upper coupler, if it's been out for a year or so, you're going to see an indention. And it will, that, that, that truck will sit there and ride 
as long as I'm using my braking system in, ent in, in its entirety, more than likely it's not going to come off. I pull a hand valve and it'll, <laughs> you'll look back and go, try? oh, that's mine. Okay, here again, suspension. I'm looking at the, the uh, springs, the shackles, the spring hangers, um, um, air ride, anything of that nature. I'm listening for air leak. And underneath here, as I did on the steer axle, I'm looking for the brake lining thickness. I'm also checking push rod travel. I'm looking for grease and oil, missing parts, anything that's out of the ordinary. Cracks in the frame, cracks in the, in the mounting device for the, for the fifth wheel. Okay? Again, and I can't, I can't stress this enough, what I hear and what I smell is very important when I'm doing this inspection. All right, let's back on up. I'm going to stop somewhere in the center of the trailer, and I'm going to get, I'm going to get down, and I'm going to look for van open top trailers or any box trailers that you see us. One of the things is, is that, that we're concerned about is collapse. And what you what we find is when the floor gets messed up, holes in the floor, the cross members, or the main rails, top and bottom, when they get when they get broke or they get messed up, or I start seeing these rivets uh, loose, being being uh, elong holes being elongated. And certainly that tells me that I've got some stress in that trailer that's created some problems, okay? And I want to try to find those. I'm going to keep working back until I get to my trailer tangle. Here again, I want to make sure that the locking mechanism, the key, if this, if this is a sliding subframe, I want to make sure that the locking mechanism is in fact locked, that the sliding subframe is not in danger of coming out. You have sliding subframes that that that, uh, that are permanently mounted. You have others that can move. Okay, you have some that can move that people they've actually welded them up so they can't move them anymore. So all that needs to, to, to come into play. What I'm underneath here, I'm certainly going to check the same braking type braking system. Under back here, I can check a lot more of the spider or where the braking mechanism actually attaches to the axle. It's very important, something that we uh, don't spend enough time uh, inspecting as troopers because it's hard to get people to understand what all parts is in there. I think the industry does probably not as good a job as we used to do. But the spider, the spider casting and the bolts that holds all the braking you can check that from inside here. This has got an air, air ride system on it, so certainly I want to check that. I want to check all the tubing and hoses. Again, if you see an inspection, and I said this earlier, and it, it has written up a, a brake hose cut, hose is, is rubber, a rubber hose. Tubing is plastic. Okay, so hopefully the inspectors, as they write this stuff up, they're writing up holes or tubing. Because if you got a leak in tubing, because if you did an inspection on my on, 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 on my truck and you wrote up holes, I wouldn't look at that. That's not holes. That's tubing. Okay, so so hopefully we're we're letting you know the difference. If if it is holes, then we're writing it up as brake holes. If it's tubing, then we're writing it up as brake tubing. All right, um, checking the brake chambers again, uh, all the cross members, the axles, um, the suspension, um, checking to make sure nothing's in between the tires, making sure the tires are inflated, um, making sure that, again, that the rims are not cracked. I'm trying to think of anything else. When you do this a second time, it, it kind of, you know, the first time you can kind of remember everything you want to say. The second time, the first time, start running into it. All right. What, what, as an inspector, one of the things that this, what do you see about this trailer? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? Wheels have been 
been painted, been painted a bunch. That tells me it's pretty old. That right there tells me that that trailer's been set. Okay, so that's all things that I'm gonna I'm gonna pay close attention to, to make sure that everything is working. Now, when I see something like this. Now that's of course that's that's where the paint's bubbled and there's rust in under there, but 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 that could indicate a crack. And if that were up here, I would be a lot more I would be a lot more interested in it. But I'm gonna check. I'm gonna make sure that there's no cracks in here. Okay. I'm gonna make sure that there's no that that, that right there where the mark where there used to be a ring around the wheel fasteners that 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 that's not a crack. Okay. Because it could be. One of the things that I teach the the troopers uh, when we're doing these inspections is that I look for companies, drivers trying to cover things up. Believe it or not, we find from time to time uh, where somebody's took Bondo or something of that nature and tried to cover up a crack. Now I will absolutely uh, do everything I can to, to put the driver in jail for that, because that, that, you don't want your family driving beside that. I mean, that's an obvious violation, you know. Uh, the, 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 the key term we used earlier is, is wallered. The whole, it's, uh, that, that lug hole gets wallered out. Now, you'll remember that. See, even for you high society folks like I know, just kidding, I'm just playing, just, we all remember wallered out. And that's what happens is when that when that that uh, wheel faster gets loose, that, that tire can move on those lugs. Okay, and that hole gets elongated. And when that happens, that rim is no good. It's no good. Okay, so that's certainly something that I, that that I'm looking for is those elongated uh, lug holes or cracks um, or obviously covered up. Violations again. You can't weld. You can't even weld a rim. That's not legal. Okay, so, so uh, pretty good place to find violations, especially on trailers uh, of that thing. Maybe that's been sitting around for a while. The ABS here again. I, I, I try to get the driver involved in this. I ask is ABS working. Most of them will say, yeah, it's working, and, and, and as soon as this driver starts his truck up, this light's going to co should come on, most of them, is that right? Mm -hmm. And then it'll stay on, and then it'll go off, right? Mm -hmm. Some of, he's got a light on some of the trailers that when he applies the brake, comes on up front, is that? Yeah, and that may come on sometime. And as long as that's, the driver thinks that everything's working, and I see no indication that it's not, I'm not a technician. I'm an inspector. Okay. Now, if that driver tells me that something's wrong, then we'll go a little further if we possibly can, with my knowledge, with what I can do. Is that an out of service item? Could be, absolutely. Could be. If the AB is not working. It could be, and we're going to go to the out of service criteria to find that. Okay. Back here, I'm going to check to the, the, the rear end protection. That's the main thing. And here, what I'm looking for here is to make sure it's not cracked, broke, going to fall on the roadway. The, the, earlier in the day, the, the question came up about the spare tire and it not being secured. And certainly, quit time. I think he got the Budweiser early. Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to go I visit. Say you go. <laughs> I got us to leave. Especially if you're sheriff. <laughs> Show up in the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Spare tire not being secured, that's an easy out of service item. You know, it, it's, it's, it's too simple to happen to you. And, and goodness, that, that CSA 2010, an out of service vehicle, it's pretty important to you, isn't it? Little things like that make a big difference. And, and, and here again, and I'm going to say it one more time, get Get to your drivers and your technicians and your mechanics. You need to really focus on that level of your company because that's where, that's going to keep the doors open, it's going to shut the doors eventually. 
Okay, um, that's basically our inspection, the way we do our inspection. I uh, know you didn't crawl under and look at all the pieces and parts, but we really try to see things that's obviously not the way the manufacturer made them. That, that's really what you try to do. Okay, any questions? Everybody just wants to go home. <laughs> How many traders I mean, I, have you I'm sorry, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. How many traders have you inspected? You gave a statistic earlier on the fifth wheel slide being pulled out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many pins are not secured on the fifth wheel oh, on the goodness. trader slide? <laughs> out of 21 years? Yeah. To have them all out? Probably less than 20. To have one or one or two, maybe one of two missing or two of four missing. Probably a couple of hundred, something like that. That's just as dangerous. Oh, absolutely, you know, certainly. Just as dangerous. You, you know, and it's little things. It's little things. Um, you see, and I've got picture after picture after picture of, of subframes that slid completely out from under trailer. Mm. And drivers say, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> I can tell you how it happened. Driver, <laughs> you didn't lock your subframe. Oh, I did. Here's the way you can. When you when you have your driver, when your driver says, oh, I locked my subframe, this rail, this locking rail that's still under your trailer, did, she or she did not lock the subframe. Now, occasionally, those subframes will get twisted up and they'll think they locked them and they'll start bouncing down the road and they'll straighten up and there they'll go and they'll fly up. So that's something that's something that just you have to physically look at. When I lock that sliding subframe, I physically have to look in under there and make sure that those pins went in place. And again, it's easy. You know, simple stuff. It's not difficult. You don't, there's, there's no training required of your driver to lock those subframes in place, other than say, hey, you got to do it. What else? Your, your brake stroke, let's say you took it in for service, mm -hmm. and they put a two and a half inch stroke versus a three inch stroke on there, and you don't know to look for the diamond or the round. Well, uh -huh. we're, we're going, we're going to, we have to determine by CVSA procedure, we should be determining what size brake chamber that is. So if it's a type 30 regular stroke, it'll be two inch. If right. it's type 30 long stroke, it's gonna be two and a half or up to, I think there's even three inch stroke. But, but what I'll do is I'll get the numbers off the chamber and then take it to the out of service criteria. That's what I'm supposed to do. Now I can't promise you that's always happening. Well, is it legal to have two different chambers? <laughs> no, no, it's not. On that truck? Mm -hmm. Well, on different axles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as I'm, as long as I'm the same across, not mis mismatched right, across. Side, yeah. In other words, and that's a great question. I can have a different, a different chamber on the axle. Well, this one, axle three, as I do axle four. Yes. Could you? Oh, absolutely. There's no violation there. And, and, and a matter of fact, on a lot of your trailers, one of the ways that that costs have been cut. And, and tractors too, and not so much maybe trailers, but tractors on the drive axles, you'll have uh, a, a spring on one and a non-spring on the other. Oh really? Yes. Is that, so, that, is that on the newer equipment now? It's, it's on a lot of equipment now. It's one of the costs. You're talking about, equipment. is this the parking brake chamber on one That's axle? Correct. Oh, yes. I got you. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So... And then you can do the very same thing on the trailer. Because in, in 393.40, the only thing it says is that when that actuates, it's got to hold that trailer still. It doesn't say for a spring break, it's going to be for eternity until the spring breaks or something of that nature. On a uh, battery powered breakaway system, it's got to be 15 minutes. So. Your reflective tape at the top corners, does it have to be in an L shape or do you just have to have reflective tape at the top corners? You gotta have reflective tape. Now, most of the time, it's gonna be in that shape because they're trying they're trying to meet a square inch. Right. What they're trying to do here again, and that's a great question. And, and here's why I say that: one inspector is gonna be terrible to write you up for conspicuous tape. Another's not. It, 
it's all in the eye of the beholder. If that's in my area where I feel comfortable at, then, then, then you know what? It's that's that's what I'm going to write a lot, a lot up of. You heard you've heard me say very little about it. You, you know, I want to make sure it's there. If, if it's scraped up or if it's forced up, it's missing. I may tell your driver. You may get another inspector that when when half of one piece is missing, they're going to have to fit. You know, so so that's just. I mean, the best thing to do is keep it on there and keep it in good good condition. What else? I appreciate it. If I can help you, I'll be around for a few minutes. If not, good luck with your inspection. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you much. Thank you. Enjoy it.